Hello friends, and um, welcome to part 3 of a D&D one-shot that Jenny put together for us to play as part of the Bards for Bard 2021 charity drive. If you haven't heard of this before, Bards for Bards is a community-driven event in support of Artist Relief Tree, a charity that provides aid to creatives who have been affected by the pandemic. From dancers, to musicians, to theatre workers, and everyone in between. We would really like it if this video made you smile that you could consider paying that joy forward and making a donation to the Artist Relief Tree. All the relevant links to do that will be in the description, along with the links to the official Bards for Bards Twitter page where you can stay updated on all the events happening throughout the month. This video is part 3 of a Bards themed mini campaign, and we're going to be posting new instalments every week in April. So we hope you stay tuned for all of that, and if you've missed parts 1 and 2, there'll be a link probably above, or there'll be a playlist linked below. Fair warning, we recorded this entire uh, one shot in one, maybe seven, eight hour sitting. Uh, and this is the uh, three hour mark, sort of peak caffeination. Um, and it will only get more chaotic as the month goes on. So good luck with that. So um, you want to gather people for your show, contestants for your game show. Yes, mm -hmm. contestants, the luckiest people and we need to check out the other departments yeah where would you like to start you already met um jimmy russells who's currently loading the tapes into the deck he's the sound engineer so you can go to props costume hair and makeup you can go find the gaffer you can go to the green room the young lady suggested we go to the Eat. costumes said there were some nice women there there it is. <laughs> Lovely females. I have a friend there, Miss Mr. Draws. A chest chest of drawers. In the costume God. department. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. yes. So you head to the costume department. You you open the door and find like a handful of people who are sitting at sewing machines, the noise of which is mostly the noise in this room. It's like weirdly warm in here. Maybe it's the fluorescent lighting and the copious amount of polyester to be found in, in bolts around the room. Behind the table in the middle of the room is the head of the department, a furbolg, wearing a dark green cable knit cardigan and a huge pair of square glasses. He is slowly and deliberately cutting a piece of fabric with a huge pair of shears when he finally looks up at you it's like he's uh, you've been stood there for five minutes and he's only just noticed you. He's like, ah, oh, hey, dudes. Good sir. We are putting on an extravaganza. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh... To explain to you this whole ordeal, I'll pass you over to my colleague, David Bethany. Oh, hello. Why is that the one name he gets right? <laughs> How could he ever get it wrong? <laughs> okay, so I just want to um, shout out uh, the name of this verbal is Mick Boy. <laughs> With thanks to Ignis for translation help. Um, yes, Ignis. <laughs> so uh, Mick is like seven, seven and a half foot tall. So, wow. Um, he I'm... like leans over the counter to look at uh, David Bettany and he's like, hey dude, what's up? What, what race is he again? He's a furbolg. What's a furbolg? Like a cow person? Yeah. They got like, yeah, like soft, the soft faces like cows, yeah. They're fuzzy. They're cow people. They're just really chill. Yeah. <laughs> He's a soft. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any uh, large quantities of fabric in in a lovely, creamy, moist beige? I hate that. Do you use the word moist? moist. <laughs> That's a terrible descriptor. Because I'm Boric Jackson. I don't have any wet fabric <laughs> no 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 it doesn't have to be wet just beige i probably have some beige wonderful good sir good good sir what well, you just want you just want a, a roll well yes that would be fabulous we just, want like i just so that we could dress the the game room in, in the beige. We want like wedding mm. drapery, you know, because we're gonna like. Yes, mm. has he got anything floral? You know, roll out mm. the uh, the beige carpet. Yeah, man. So we need like some wedding dresses. We need like everyone's gonna be wearing wedding dresses because there could potentially be a wedding at the end of this, right? And so we need some wedding dresses. We need like wedding drapery. He like, like nods his head really slowly. 
you know, like inside your granddad's caravan. It's like that, and it smells like that too. That's what we're going. Granddad's for. caravan. Does it have yes. to smell like that? Couldn't we wash it first? Absolutely, oh. it does. About the immersion. I see. That's a shame. Like anything, like floral you got, like you know, wedding, because we're saying yes to these dresses. Who's wearing the wedding dress? I will be. Oh, Mr. Bentney, I didn't know you were getting married. Neither did I, but I'm real <laughs> excited about it. Congratulations. When did you get Thanks. engaged? <laughs> um, now, I guess. Wow. Who's the lucky person? <laughs> I, I look up heart eye towards Bo Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely oblivious <laughs> to everything you've just said and just turns to Mick. I'm going to need the most extravagant groom suit, you know? Groom suit. And I, I, like nobody else has ever gotten married before. Like, like it is the most exquisite suit you've ever seen. You could have a suit like Mr. Melon. Yes, but slightly less disgusting. Oh, that's quite rude. We should have like beige sequins. Do you have those? Beige sequins! I'm afraid all of the sequins are uh, contractually set aside for Mr. Melons. Yeah, I've contractually got dibs on them. No sequins then! Lace! Maybe some lace! So you want a beige wedding dress, a beige... No, I want a white wedding dress. He wants a beige suit. You want beige sequins, Mr. Melons? And, and Mr. Merriweather, do you want a beige trench coat? Can I get sequins on mine? Well, the sequins <laughs> are, you know, contractually only for Mr. Melons. Um, I, I, I think we can, we, we can, we can rewrite that. Uh, uh, I really want some sequins now. <laughs> oh, well, that's a little above my pay. You could maybe have a feather, feather boa or something. We could get you, like, a fun hat. We could get you, like, a, you know, because you've got your hat and you always have your hat. We could get you a fun hat. Hey, Miss Grey. How, how's your uh, how's your clown costume holding up? Uh, it's good. Um, What's your, uh, what do you need from us today? Huh? Oh, nothing, actually. Weirdly, I don't know. Uh, She's going to be the flower girl. I see it so clearly now. She needs a, a lovely little dress with lots of flowers. She's our bridesmaid. And my maid of honour. Can it not be beige? <laughs> this is really taking shape, it seems. <laughs> oh, hey. Congratulations. You must be very proud of them to be getting married in, in this place that they love with their friends. I'm so happy for all of you. I'm so excited. Um, so so th this, this thing that we're doing... It, it sort of starts with like a fun, a fun game show, and um, a fun, completely not rigged game show. By any <laughs> chance, have you heard about yeah. the state of TV? TV, just generally speaking, heard anything? Well, I mean, we could do with uh, having some of our sewing machines repaired and like you look over in the corner and there's like a stack of dead sewing machines oh <laughs> yeah the machine graveyard walter melons does a little well, salute we're, we're hoping we're hoping to sort of do a a fundraiser it for a big fun event to make money so maybe we thought some of you might like to join in oh Yes, do you have any beautiful ladies who want to volunteer? Or not ladies, you don't have to. You're a bit to, creepy, aren't you? Mm. You don't have to get close to him if you don't Are you want. inviting me to your wedding? Yes, absolutely good, sir. <laughs> Always invite the dressmaker. He, like, um, wipes like a single tear. Oh. <laughs> oh. Like, I would really be honoured oh. to come to your wedding, <laughs> Mr. Jackman. Oh. It would mean a great oh. deal to me. I'll be there. My good sir, would you like to be my best man? I I, I don't, I, I barely know you, Mr. Jackman, but if you think that <laughs> that's what you need from me right now on your big day, I'll be here for you. Absolutely it is, good sir. We need a strong strong lad like you to stand and 
and help me uh, on my big Mr. day. Mr. Jackson, can you remember his name? <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Sorry, did you? I I I make mistakes. No, I know. I know I'm to just, talk to Derek. No, no, no. I'm just joking with you. Oh, oh we've okay. good friends. Is what friends <laughs> do. Banter. Banter. Yes. I see. I understand. He clearly does not understand. <laughs> <laughs> he says that, but he's shaking his head. <laughs> so, just uh, your you. So for your wedding, you need a beige suit, a beige dress, a beige sequin suit, white dress. I want a white dress. A, a white. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> a white dress, and then something of a flower girl dress, also in beige. Ba- basically, the inside of a box of tissues. It could See, be any colour okay. the young lady wishes. You know, youngsters and their colours. Oh, that's good. I did not. I don't think I'd look good in beige. Mick, like, walks very slowly towards a rack of um, rolls of fabric or bolts of fabric and he pulls out, um, like, some shiny, shiny beige-looking satin <laughs> and he, he puts it on the table in front of you and he says, will this do for your... Uh, for your for your, for draping purposes. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's uh, it's really a pleasure to help you on the day of your wedding, oh, Mr. Jackson. You are a good, good person. You know this. Thank you, thank you so much. I mean, so lot to me cause, to hear you say that. And he like wipes a little tear away. Are there any other? Uh, uh, how many other people are there in this? In this department, uh, there's about there's three other people in here. There's Chester Jaws, uh, <laughs> who is the person that usually deals with um, uh, Alana's sort of last minute help requests. Um, and then there's uh, two other people. They all kind of look like they're packing up to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they're done. Uh, I turn to Watermelons, and I'm like, "We need to get more contestants for this show." I'm starting to worry that David. Uh, may Bentley... I persuade these people to uh, stay and hang out this like this evening because we've got a great show planned and we want to like. What do you <laughs> um... What do you say to the uh, costume department to make them participate in? You'll get a pay rise. You guys are getting paid. <laughs> like guys, guys, guys. Heard of a great gig that's happening tonight. It's my wedding. You know, it's like a themed wedding. <laughs> and I'm like real excited about it. But we need more people to come hang out. So I was wondering, uh, would you guys like to stay and hang out? And, you know, at the end of it, could potentially get a pay rise. Or just not lose your jobs, you know, which is sort of the equivalent of a pay rise. If you go from having no It would mean pay. so much to me if you guys would like stay and enjoy this special moment that I'm going to be to my, you know, I'm going to be with my betrothed and I, I can't wait and I just want everyone who can to see it. Okay, make a persuasion check. I will assist David Bettany uh, and inspire him. Walter Mellon's like turns to Dick Merriweather and he's like, what What did you have in those cigars? <laughs> can I? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you do have advantage because everybody's helping yeah. you, especially Boric Jackson, oh, who's about God. to say, <laughs> "Oh, it's so good." Okay, I need to do some quick maths. I, I, I'm just backing it up as well and being like, "Yes, it's it's my big day. I'm so excited." Not realizing that he thinks he's getting married. Am I adding a d6 or nah? No, you won't. You didn't have inspiration. No, 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 no you don't have any inspiration. Okay. Um. 25. Okay, very good. So you can see kind of against their better judgment um, <laughs> that these three people are like, yeah, we're all right then, we'll stay. Uh, we may or may not participate, but we will be in the studio audience at a oh, minimum. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it, it's okay. Don't, <laughs> just don't. <laughs> I like shuffle over in between uh, Walter and Dick and I'm like, he seems a little bit too excited for this. Um, it's Is it making anyone else feel a bit weird? A little bit weird, yeah. <laughs> I mean. I feel like I'm intervening in someone's personal business. It's a bit weird. I mean, if they've got some... Stuff they got to sort out. 
Like, and he's looking between, like, <laughs> David Bettany and Boric Jackson, the oblivious. Uh, <laughs> He's just like, well, if, if they've got some stuff to sort out, they may as well do it on uh, on TV TV. I think they're actually getting married. <laughs> to be honest, David Bettany's just really excited to be in a wedding dress and be celebrated for it. <laughs> he hasn't quite processed, like, the commitment side of it yet. <laughs> like, if he wants to sign his life away to Boric Jackson live on TV, he can. He's just excited for a big party where he gets to wear a dress and everyone looks at him for a while. Like, that's literally. <laughs> that's currently all he's excited for. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Okay, so, um, Mick Boyer has, um, I'm probably fucking that up, but, uh, what is it? He has, he, um, okay, well, Mick is the Norwegian word for soft. And then, uh, so their joke originally that it was that he's a soft boy. Um, ah. But then I, was, I thought, oh, I better check with the Norwegian person I know if, oh, if this word means anything the way I spelt it. And it turns out it does. <laughs> uh, a boy, uh, which I'm probably not pronouncing properly, properly is either <laughs> to bend something or... It's uh, the inflatable ring that you throw out to save somebody when they're drowning. Oh. So <laughs> he's a soft boy. <laughs> soft <Right>. floaty. <laughs> so he has uh, Alana's measurements on file because of the, all of the crazy costumes that she's having to wear in her, her day-to-day life. Um, so he spends a couple of minutes uh, grabbing uh, the measurements of the people who need stuff doing and the order basically um whilst he's doing that where would you guys like to go next should go to the the props department to get some flowers and things for the for you know to go with the the set oh yes we need lots and of flowers green. yes so once all you've had all your measurements taken you uh head down to the basement of tv towers um where you find a cupboard the door to the cupboard has a window in it, but it's pretty much completely covered in band stickers, art prints, and a handwritten note that just says, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you open the door, uh, and uh, it's it's kind of dark in here, but there is a beacon of bright daylight which shines from a daylight lamp over um, the desk of the old Noel who works in this department. This is Roger May. He uh, is working on something when you come in, but he turns to look at you as you uh, arrive, sort of shining the the light of the hallway into his office. He's wearing magnifying lenses, um, which make his eyes look really, really, really wild looking. Though really to call it turning around is a bit generous. The chair that he has is a wheelie chair that looks like it was reclaimed from a skip about 20 years ago <laughs> the foam's bare in places and it's falling out in others and as he turns it he's kind of more jumping around in his seat it creaks as he forces its ancient mechanism to move <laughs> behind his desk you can see the shape of a lot of stuff but it's dark past his desk so you can't really see what any of it is now the one thing you do know about Roger is that uh, he uh, has very he's kind of hard of hearing um he was a rocker in his youth and uh, <laughs> he has damaged his hearing david this one's for yeah. you you know all about music have, have any of them been for you though um Boric? are you saying i, I just, can't convince him i oh i i'll have you know that i'm very good can you speak up please people. i've actually changed my mind can you speak up oh my god i can't Mr. Jackson. Oh, hello. I know who you are. Yeah, mm-hmm, unfortunately. Yes, Mr. Jackson, you know me. Mm. Uh, did you remember I told you that you weren't really allowed down here? Do you remember last time? <laughs> ah, yes, I know. I know. But see, just you wait. Um, okay, uh, can I try and use friend on him? You're going to cast friends <laughs> on him? <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna try, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. I turn around uh, to everybody else and I go, Right. My plan is to convince him to give us all the props and things that we need and then I'm going to leg it before the spell ends and then it's your job to convince him to come to the show. 
Once I'm gone. I didn't know you could run. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, it's quite rude to to turn around when and talk to other people. Look, I might, might be hard of hearing, but I can see you. Yeah, hello. So, uh, you're looking quite dapper today, aren't you? You, you smart dresser, you. He, like, um, pulls up all of the magnifying lenses so you can just see his normal eyes underneath <laughs> him and he's just squinting at you. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> I need all of your wedding props, flowers. Elegant things. We're putting on an extravaganza. You could be a part of it if you wanted to. You're very <laughs> dashing, aren't you? We should probably mention that it's going to save the TV studio. It's going to save your job. <laughs> Can I just jump in between him and the knoll and scream, We're getting married! <laughs> are, you, are you casting friends on him, Mr. Jackson? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose uh, congratulations or something. Um, make a persuasion check. Oh, good lord. Oh, dear. Can I inspire him? Or assist him, actually? Yeah, you can in assist. How are you assisting him? Um. Well, just like, you know, being like, I'm so excited. It's my wedding and I can't have it be bad in any way. And also, you know, being employed is also important. <laughs> okay. That's a, a 15... That, that there is quite a lot of wedding stuff back here. You can Fabulous! Ask, but you can't have all of it, okay? Why not? Well, because like, there's a lot of it. And he turn, he like reaches over and he turns on the light, okay? And you watch as like the what was like the dark shape of stuff behind his desk. The light comes on, and it's revealed to be actually just like his desk is holding back the tide. Oh my god. <laughs> Like there's probably quite a big room behind the desk, but it's it everything is is right. He's <laughs> his office, his cupboard is actually just like the space around his desk from where he's like managed to push stuff back so he's got enough room for his chair. Wow. Like when you uh, cram all the Tupperware in the cupboard and yeah. then you close it and you can see it leaning against the glass. <laughs> <laughs> and you just slam the door shut so nothing explodes outwards. Uh huh. <laughs> I feel like being able to see it now, he's starting to sort of rummage through it and he like pulls out a little thing that was like wedging a bunch of other stuff and it just like topples everything down. I I'm going to take a step back. <laughs> if you would please make a uh, slight hand check, please, Mr. Mr. Jackson. This is a game of Jenga a now. Of hand check. <laughs> this is where we're alarmed to find out that his sleight of hand is actually really he high. He did say he had crazy sleight of hand, didn't he? <laughs> well, I rolled a two, so that's a bit cheap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is... My clammy hands have failed me. <laughs> uh, that's a six. Oh, Okay. Right, well, if, if everybody would make a dexterity saving throw, please. <laughs> oh, I stepped back already. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can have a, you've had an advantage, uh, Mr. Merriweather. Um, Yay. Um, can I really quickly uh, just uh, <laughs> use unsettling words to <laughs> to um, say to Boric Yaxon, uh, uh, I, I really think this is why you keep getting banned from places and people aren't exactly fond of your company and that <laughs> uh basically it's the opposite of bardic inspiration so uh you get a bardic inspiration dice but you have to subtract it from your saving throw wow. <laughs> oh my god okay. wow <laughs> savage. savage is that savage. a savage yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, Alex. This is why people don't okay. like you. I told you I was going to hold on to that uh, insight check he did before about Boric Yaks and hating himself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Dick Merriweather, what did you roll? Uh, I we actually have to message you about this. Uh, Wait. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, I would like to say real quick, um, I fucked up Boris Jackson's role, but Walter Mellon's got a nat 20. <laughs> His own save. Wow. Hey, what a noodly oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Is David about to be widowed before he was even married? Okay, um, no, Dick doesn't stand away. He doesn't, he doesn't move at all. He's like, he is shocked, but he doesn't move. Okay, so Elana, what did you get? I got a 13. Okay, cool. David Betney? I got a 16. Okay, cool. Um, Mr. Melons? Nat 20 plus something. Wow. What kind of save was it again? Dexterity, yeah. 
22. Boric. <laughs> well, I I did have a plus four to my dexterity. I'm actually quite a smooth mover. But <laughs> my my roll to, to take it off was also four. So it's just my straight roll in the end, which was 15. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Merriweather... It's actually higher. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> After all that. Um, so, uh, 15 is what you would have needed. So, who got under that? That was uh, Alana. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> the intern. Okay. Uh, Alana and uh, Roger are the only people who are consumed by the, <laughs> the tide of shit. Oh no! <laughs> as as, as Borat reaches up to pull something out of the out of the <laughs> pile, um, it starts to rumble, and Roger's like, "No, no, no, no!" And then he gets like immediately uh, buried <laughs> in like oh, no. paint cans. Uh, you know, there's like a couple of bottles of fast cast in there. There's oh, like. God. Six different Ugh. packets of uh, steel wool for some reason. You know, there's like lots Ooh. of sandpaper sliding around. Uh, <laughs> Paint brushes, glue mixers, tongue depressors, you know. God. Paper cups, overwhelmingly, like, bong, 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 because they bounce off of the pile. Um, and you lose sight of Roger and Alana. I turn around and I go, oh, lucky we're all pretty dexterous, huh? Nobody got buried pat myself down oh, wow it's sticky in here oh, where did that voice come from <laughs> you take <laughs> six points of damage from oh my gosh <laughs> the wreckage. that's hefty <laughs> um i'm gonna i'm gonna search for me uh and and check if they're okay is the prop master dead <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna ignore that and look for some wedding props okay mm. everybody who's <laughs> rummaging through the pile either for people or for props is investigation checks please 24 for looking for wedding stuff <laughs> not for search and rescue <laughs> can i like go up to um Boric and be like oh my god babe we need wedding rings quite right <laughs> my wife will need yeah. a ring um <laughs> Just the fucking fact that Boric is still completely oblivious to Paul Bettany or David so Bettany's fucking um, <laughs> matchmaking. Jenny, can I cast Mage Hand, but like above me and outside of the rubbish, just to like ding, 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 like point down? Uh, can I also cast Mage Hand and give uh, the, uh, give Elena's Mage Hand a high five? <laughs> <laughs> you unuseful piece of shit. Yeah, sure. Make no move to help, just sort of pep. <laughs> it's like Marco Polo, but like, I found you. Okay, so what did everybody roll for their investigations? 12. Who, who, you were looking for, for Roger, yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. Uh, uh, Boric, you, you were rolling for... Looking for wedding props, yeah, and I got 24. <laughs> okay, nice. So you find <laughs> bundles and bundles of fake flowers, uh, some vases of varying styles to put them in, uh, like fake Greco-Roman plinths, um, like fake columns as well. I mean, this cupboard really was holding a, an extraordinary amount of garbage in it. Um, what else would you like? Like a cadaver back there. It's about to be. <laughs> we need rings. Yeah, you have to like swim through like seven different like variations of the same dinosaur head. Um, and... because uh, my good friend David Bettany suggested rings. I thought, <laughs> ah, yes, rings, absolutely. So I'm looking for some jewelry. Okay, yeah, you find lots and lots of not necessarily jewelry, but pieces. So like. Crowns you would find in here. Oh, yes, a um, crown. I'm going to wear a crown. There's lots of like really big, really big fake stuff, like r like oversized <laughs> things. Um, but if you want like proper jewelry, you're going to have to go back up to costume, like stuff that fits you, for example. I'll take a couple of crowns though. That sounds okay. good. Uh, were you rolling an investigation check, Walter, or you, were you just high fiving? I was just high fiving. Okay, so Alana remains buried, <laughs> and Roger eventually. Both the swims his way out of the mess and is pulled out by um by Dick. Ow! <laughs> and Roger turns to uh, uh, <laughs> turns to to Borak and says, "You're never allowed down here again." Okay, bye. <laughs> As he, he walks out with like things under his arms, like I'll see you back in the room. He hello. Um. 
And then I guess Roger is Hello. the one that dives in after <laughs> Alana. He's like, and you forgot your bloody intern, didn't you? <laughs> oh, much better. Yeah, he knows his way around the cupboard even when it's been demolished. And he um, uh, basically lifts Al- Alana above his <laughs> head. <laughs> like, I found your intern. I'm quite sticky now. Yeah, he like oh. he like pulls like a, a mixing stick off of your face. <laughs> oh. You know, got a free waxing there. It's like you've got like a plastiline oh, in no. your hair, oh. and oh. Uh, you know, there's like, yeah, your hand went into a tub of Vaseline. Uh, oh. I've, I've, oh, I I no. feel as clammy as Bark looks. I heard that. <laughs> you've had a mouthful of um of alginate as well. It's it's a bad time. The paper cup that's been covered with cling film and it's just full of latex. Oh, oh no, yeah. Oh, it smells like fish. <laughs> Mixed with acrylic paint. It looks like chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so your clown costume's like now like it's it mm, <laughs> smells like latex. I'm afraid you've, yeah. you've become arts and crafts. <laughs> I uh, I I'm I don't think they're gonna be very happy with this. I was meant to return it. Uh, Boric, did you you needed to go back up to costume for rings or something? Yes. Would you like, I'm, if, should I go? If I go get changed, the rings. I yes. Could go find... You're already scuttled away. <laughs> scuttled away. That's <laughs> yeah. a very good descriptor. Such a smart young girl. <laughs> Can I run up to Alana and describe to her the perfect wedding ring for me? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I uh, uh, like pull out a little like notepad. Like it just keeps going. Like it's like a really long description. Yeah, but like so, Boric would probably get like you know a plain band or whatever like that. But I want like the biggest diamond you got. Like as in I can't lift my hand. Diamond. That perfect. Thanks, babe. <laughs> oh. Okay, I don't think we don't see. There's not much budget. That is kind of the big problem I mean, here. So, just a little disco ball will do, really. Just put some rocks in it to make it heavy. Oh, okay. Stick a disco ball on a ring. Uh, but the but you know, Mister Melons here, he's contractually obliged to have all the shiny things. So I'm not sure. We'll see about well, that. I'll go. I'll <laughs> ask. I'll see what they can do. <laughs> I like. I like look at um. I like look at Walter with like a really evil look in my eye, and I'm like. That will change. <laughs> <laughs> well, Walter just raises his eyebrow. <laughs> okay, so you um you can go back down to the studio to drop off your stuff, but then after that, the only places that you have left are hair and makeup. Um, you can go find the gaffer's office and uh the green room. Hair and makeup. Let's go. Uh, I would like to have a word with uh Dick Merriweather as we as we're walking. Oh. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing, Slick? Uh, hey, hey. Uh, so, uh, you seem pretty intent on uh, committing some kind of forgery today, am I right? Mm, depends. <laughs> I mean... Uh, what, what, what are you thinking? Well, I mean, you said we could make a fake diamond. You said we could mm. forge uh, a, a, a Jeef Beboop bank transfer. You yeah, yeah. mentioned something well, earlier about amending contracts. Mm, that too. I, I, I don't know what contract we could write or edit. Uh, not one that uh, Bebop has his signature on, anyway. Uh, but but maybe we could we could make a a a, a, a fake uh, gun that that gets rid of like. Wait, no, that's just a reg- that's a regular gun. A regular gun gets rid of people. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Guns don't get rid of people. People get rid of. People. I don't know so- something that would really <laughs> a- attract <laughs> attract Bebop's attention and make him spend a lot of money on it and. Uh, Make him poor that he can't afford the show uh, at station. I mean, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Uh, you sure are. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> help me out, maybe. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, as we're walking, um, I'd like to try and look him in the face. <laughs> How oh. successful is that attempt? Uh, I, I have a big collar on my coat, and uh, every 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 like <laughs> few seconds, I'm I'm ruffling it higher and higher. You have a but you make a perception check at disadvantage, is what I would say. No, I don't even think I need the disadvantage. That first one was bad. Take a picture, kid. Uh, it'll last longer. Uh, <laughs> perception. Mm-hmm. That's a big old five, baby. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can stare into the the void that is beneath the hat and between the collar, but uh, he's an expert at deflecting, um, you know, your gaze and the light. 
Yeah, you're quite bright as well. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like all of my uh, perception checks just get disadvantaged from the glare of my own jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are we headed now? Uh, hair and makeup, I believe. Have we dropped off the the bits? Yep. Okay. You dropped off the, the stuff. Um, I'll say that Alana's gotten changed okay. into something else. What what what's the what would you like to change into? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I've gone back up there. And they're like, yeah, I don't. We've misplaced your actual clothes. Uh, they're in the pile somewhere. Just pick something from from the rack. I don't care. <laughs> so Alana ends up in her pirate costume. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of the one of the other ones that was like made for at some point for another show. It fits her. I feel like um, somebody like either Chester Draws or, or Mick Boy was like, oh well, you don't have to take the hat with you you don't have to wear the hat if you don't want to make it a little bit less piratey and alana was like well you know <laughs> in for a penny <laughs> yeah if i gotta I might also wear the hat <laughs> yeah i already got this scratchy beard on it's been a weird day anyway why the hell not uh okay so y'all head to hair and makeup so the makeup department is busy with people packing up for the end of the day An exceptionally old human is sat in a makeup chair fanning themselves as if they've just recovered from a (laughs) fainting spell. Bewley Quackenbush looks pristine (laughs) as ever. Oh my goodness. It's going to be a Prince Philip joke. Oh, Quackenbush is one person. (laughs) Never a hair out of place. Never a single smudge of their eyeliner. They are dressed as if they fell out of an 18th century romance novel. Oh, hello. And when you all come in, the fanning ceases long enough for them to go... Oh, no. <laughs> My dear, whatever is the matter? Oh, you again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting you married. <laughs> I need you to, I need you to get the, uh, you know, the greys. I need you to get the greys. <laughs> Uh, with thanks to Kimberly Anderson at Paint and Cloth on Twitter for Beauty mm-hmm. Quackenbush's name. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> <laughs> Billy uh, covers their face with, with the fan uh, <laughs> and sort of through a sob says I have done everything I can to you <laughs> Boric I am th- and there is only so much an artist can I, do I, I, <laughs> there are limits I, 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 to I, art darling oh my God. we're going to save your job darling is there any job worth it <laughs> yes of course it is Dick is reeling from laughter. <laughs> you know, you could be a part of our our fundraiser. Mm? This task that you ask of me, it is just too great. I cannot do any more to you than I have already done. What if we pay your money? How much? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the boss by the ball, so uh, what do you want? Well, for starters, I want a pool in my house. <laughs> Okay. And a pool boy. A nice one. Oh. Oh. Can that be arranged? Dick, that might be the job for you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll have a word with the boss. We'll, we'll see what we can Dick, do. you would make a wonderful pool boy. I think she's got her eye on you. Lucky fella. M- m- me? Yes. I'm, I'm in my 40s. <laughs> you sound like Ninja <laughs> Brian. I'm not, even a, I'm not a little boy. Not a pool boy, but a pool man. What do you mean? <laughs> A pool hunk. (laughs) (laughs) Either way, they mustn't be a person whose face I can see. Ideal. What about our younger uh, spangly man here? No. (laughs) There you have it. (laughs) (laughs) Just laying out. No. I know know the uh, essence of comedy is, you know, yes and, but every now and then you got (laughs) to... A line in the sand. I, I, we we can't provide you with a pool boy. You, that's something you're going to have to find yourself. <laughs> well, I guess you've uh, we've run out of options. I will contribute myself to this <laughs> cause if I must. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good pair of tiny whities at home. They start fanning themselves again. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I mean, you'll have to buy the money to buy a pool boy all you want. You don't have to go with Boric wrinkle face here. Excuse me? Yeah. I'm like, you're flawless, babe. Don't worry about it. It's Boric Smooth Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Boric Wrinkly Jackson. Yeah. Smooth. You're like a testicle. I'm smooth. 
He starts to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I comfort you. <laughs> Must be the, the wedding jitters. I've got, I'm getting cold feet. You look like a walnut. <laughs> For our listeners at home, uh, Jenny is <laughs> head in hands <laughs> <laughs> right now. Jenny, what's the name of this character again? I've forgotten. <laughs> be really quack and bo- <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. Can I go up to them and just be like, I'm like, right, babe, it's my wedding tonight. <laughs> I'm real excited. I've got some ideas for like. <laughs> 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 okay, they, they they hold their hand up. They they like point their fan at you, and they're like, "Would you tell Michelangelo how to set the angel free?" <laughs> no, <laughs> you shall not teach me how to paint. I am a master of this art. Yeah, nobody talks to the Ninja Turtles that way. <laughs> I'm not teaching you, and just telling you what I want. You don't know what you want. Nobody ever does. I do, though. I really do. Listen to me. You are wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna, I've got a reference for what I want. Bear, bear with. <laughs> I mean, h- how do you know you want a little pool boy, huh? How do you know you want a swimming pool? I, well, I mean, everybody wants a swimming pool. <laughs> I feel like it's at this exact moment that Alana walks back in. Like, she <laughs> enters the room. <laughs> I want this. <laughs> uh, uh-oh. You, you had that in your pocket? <laughs> was that a picture you just pulled up from your pocket? Or, or... <laughs> Why did you get that? It's a bit weird that that was in your pocket. David Bettany just had that in his wallet. I really want this. It's really important to me. All look like my mum did on her wedding day. Why you do know? you have a picture of a child in your pocket? <laughs> make, a, make a persuasion check, David. <laughs> Oh my god. Before I absolutely die. Seventeen. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> okay, Booty holds up the picture of um the child from the Grinch. <laughs> Cindy Lou Who, yeah. Like in their Cindy. their thumb and forefinger and they hold it very far away from themselves. It's not the exact image I wanted, but I couldn't remember what the original one was. So I just went with the one I <laughs> Did you just slap your hands on e- Google image search? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm crying. <laughs> okay. But... Billy holds the image very far away from themselves and, and pinches it between their thumb and forefinger as if it's like a piece of garbage that they've been given to hold. Very well. I can do this. Of course I can. I am a master. I'm so excited. What about the rest of you? Hmm? I need... I need you to get the greys and to just... Mr. Jackson, as previously discussed, there is no more I can do for you. (laughs) But it's my wedding day. You're a lost cause. (laughs) Uh, Can we just get a bucket of bleach from you? We'll we'll do it. (laughs) To insist is torture. Please do not make me do any more. Can I turn and look at... um, (laughs) Just turn and look at Boric and be like, it's all right, I like a silver fox. Well, that's good for you, but my wife might not. (laughs) (laughs) Do you at least have a wig in here, woman? (laughs) I was going to say, let's just get like a wig. Do I have a wig? There's like a a flash of confusion for a second and Beulah's like... Are you not wearing a wig? <laughs> no, this is my hair. That's all real The bib said. Yes, of course it is. Oh my, I thought it was a piece that somebody had glued to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he pretends that he didn't hear that. Someone went into a barn and simply attached straw to your scalp. Truly unfortunate. <laughs> How about the rest of you? Hmm? <laughs> Mr. Merriweather, can I tempt you no mr melon yes surely you would like some work done to maybe counteract the glare coming off of your jacket i'm I'm pretty sure just the uh just the usual would be fine the usual is a lot of concealer to cover up said bags so you come to me with the impossible the hideous. You come to me on the day of Boris Jackson's <laughs> wedding. 
You come to me with the impossible, the hideous and the boring. Is there anything else you wish to torture me with? Would would, would you maybe actually like to be on on the show? Because there are spaces available. Yeah, it might be fun. You know, you. I think the audience would love love to see you. You're lovely. And, and, and if anyone can pull off these feats, well, we think it would be you. Persuasion. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of people talking. So somebody choose who's leading the persuasion, and then somebody else, and then, then they can have advantage. Sounds like uh, Dick and Alana kind of had this one. Uh, that is an unnatural twenty. And you say that. There's a reward. What is it, mm. uh, you Well, you'll definitely keep your job. And then, you know, you could also get that pool. And you'll get a chance, you know, you'll you'll be on, on TV. And so everyone will get to see your, like, masterful work and such. And you might, you might get a better Very job. Very well. I suppose if all I ever get to send out onto the stage of the world is... You hideous people. I suppose <laughs> I might as well appear myself, that I might demonstrate what I am truly capable of. Marvellous. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry about Boric. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Boric again chooses not to hear this. That looks like a, a, a breast of chicken in a bag of Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh you're gonna spend uh, a little while getting your hair and makeup done everybody except for for dick i guess <laughs> <laughs> as long as i don't have to look like that picture that would be lovely i don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, slightly concerned that that was in your pocket uh. <laughs> uh, like at the uh, you know y'all get your regular makeup done and then at the end of it somebody spins david around in oh a my chair God. and he's got the braids it just and looks them. exactly it's like somebody <laughs> pasted the picture on his face yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i'm like crying because i love it so much <laughs> i'm like it's beautiful at this point, uh, Beauty says, "I. you mentioned that you required somebody who was ordained. I'm not, but I do believe that the person, that the gentleman in charge of the green room, <gasps> in charge of the canteen, I believe that they are. Well, how oh. convenient. That's a bit odd, actually, but that's good to know. Well, you know, you, you can get anything online these days, including mm. uh, the rights to perform a wedding. Mm, and badges. <laughs> I think uh, I think Mr. Jackson knows a whole bunch about that. I know everything. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> hey you, were you enjoying these broadcasts from us here at TV TV? Well, now you can bring the crew right to you in the form of prints, stickers, and more available right now on the Shrieking Wizard Co. store. But wait, there's more. 100% of the proceeds from the first month of sales will be donated directly to the Bards for Bards charity drive. So go out and get yourselves your very own copy of this cast of colorful characters, all for the sake of creatives in need. It's all Bards, all action, and all for charity here at TV TV. Links available in description. TV TV is not liable for any damages related but not limited to goblin teeth, prop storage avalanches, or glitter-related blinding. Thanks so much for joining us in this video. It's a bit different to our usual format so please do let us know what you thought down in the comments we really appreciate the feedback and if this video inspired you and you want to make a donation to the bards for bar charity drive there's a link to the donation page down in the description we'll see you next time <laughs>